Star City is a magic place. Uh, it's the birthplace of cosmonautics and it's this little city on the outskirts of Moscow, still tucked away in the woods, if you, if you want. Of course, we fly to the uh, space station on a Russian vehicle, the Soyuz, and so the training for those very critical moments of launch, ascent, docking, and then re-entry takes place in Star City. We have uh, simulators in Star City that are perfect replicas of the um, actual flight vehicles and the brain of the simulator is exactly the same brain of an actual uh, flight vehicle, so that it responds and it acts exactly in the same way. A very, very accurate mock-up and simulator of the Soyuz uh, MS-13 that we will fly. So it has a very sophisticated system inside that is identical to the system that we will fly uh, on the actual machine. It replicates all the situation and the conditions that we will encounter during a nominal simulation or emergency situations. We have to demonstrate our proficiency at docking the spacecraft, of approaching the spacecraft and landing in the manual mode in case all the automatic modes go down uh, with the computers. If you knew for sure that everything goes right, then the training would be very short. Because in a nominal situation, uh, lots of things happen automatically or by ground control. What we train for, however, is a number of emergencies that we know could happen. It's unlikely, but we know that could happen. There are some uh, upgrades in a simulator, for example, a smoke machine. In case of fire, they will fill the, the spacecraft with smoke so that we actually have to react to clear the smoke and uh, all the steps to save our lives uh, if, in case of fire inside the spacecraft. Now, of course, in the simulators, we face the worst possible scenarios. You might have simultaneously an issue with the computer or with the engine and at the same time a fire on board or a depressurization when you are leaking atmosphere into vacuum. And a very tricky scenario that we practice in Star City is the case of the evacuation where the atmosphere of the space station is compromised. So we have to wear the gas mask, evacuate the station and then where we are in the Soyuz we need to practice uh, donning or Orland pressure suits putting on the hood of our Orland suit and then putting on the mask again. When you re-enter uh, to Earth from space, the module breaks and is slowed down. You will feel yourself pressed into your seat with many times your own weight. 4Gs is the nominal re-entry. If there is a problem and we have to go with a ballistic re-entry, you actually can get up to eight, 10, even peaks of higher Gs. That's why the centrifuge is very important because we get exposed to that kind of physical pressure on our chest and, and the faster the centrifuge spins, the higher is the load that you uh, feel as a subject inside. The doctor who is monitoring our heart rate and our breathing rate at eight Gs will give us some exercises, some visual acuity exercises to make sure that we can still see properly because it's very important when you re-enter that you can see and read the displays and still function normally. Since the acceleration is through the body, it pushes the blood away from the frontal part. So you really need a different kind of, of respiration and uh, exercise in order to maintain consciousness during, during the profile. And my crew and I have been training uh, on a manual re-entry profile. That means that uh, the spacecraft is still controllable, but instead of having an automatic profile with the computer driving the re-entry, we have to fly it ourselves. Because the whole point of this um, manual re-entry is to actually hit the spot where they are waiting for us. <laughs> one of the most challenging times, in a way, and also one of the most fun times, it's the final exams. 
we have a, a certain number of emergency situations that will uh, be given to us in the four hours in the morning and the four hours in the afternoon. And the crew is tasked with responding to, um, to those emergency situations with their, with their knowledge, with their skills. They are authorized to deviate from the written procedures. And then there will be a, a debriefing where we have to uh, explain our actions, why we took those actions, and um, we have to do it in a timely way, in a safe, in a safe way. And that's really the end of the, of the training. From that moment on, if everything goes well, we will be qualified for flight and uh, we, we get ready. We get ready to go to the Cosmodrome and, and the flight.